welcome back to the channel and welcome to the vlog. If you've tuned into this one, you've already kind of guessed what it is by the loving title. Um, we're going to test drive a Polestar 2, the illegal car. Um, it is actually illegal in this country. We live in France and Polestar is not available in France. And not only that, it's not just not available in France, you can't even get to their website because, believe it or not, Peugeot Citroen, like the Peugeot Citroen group, have argued that the Polestar logo of two arrows pointing at each other like that is too similar to the Citroen logo, so they're not allowed to sell them in France. So we've had to go over to Switzerland in order to test drive one of these beauties. Um, so yeah, we're on the way there now. We don't know where we're going, don't know what we're doing, and we'll see when we get there. Zach's eating a breakfast sandwich. We got Zach up too early this morning. He's not used to getting up early. So I set an alarm, I didn't go off, so I woke up late. Zach's back at school tomorrow, so he's gonna struggle, but he's also not gonna be eating salami sandwiches for breakfast. We arrived early, not early, we actually arrived on time. He told us to get here at half nine for our 10 o'clock um, pickup but the shop's shut and the shop apparently doesn't open till 10 so I don't know how we could have done that. I will email their manager. Karen. So we arrived, obviously, plenty of time in Celine and, uh, and we just got a phone call and the phone call was telling us and we were like, oh, are you ready for us? Because we were waiting outside. No, they called us to cancel. When they told us to arrive, they called us to cancel. To be fair, the people that called us to cancel were the place, the boutique, the shop that we got told to pick up the keys from. So it's not their problem, but there's something wrong with a car, which equally doesn't do well for the reputation of the brand. Yeah. Um, but apparently someone from Polestar will call us. Uh, I, I will try and rearrange this, so the next time you see this, I'll probably add this to the beginning of the next one. Yeah, so next time I'll we'll see it. I'll be just driving off, just like this is gonna be the video, and then we're gonna say, oh, we got another thing, yes. and then... Yeah, so it will be the same video. So yeah. for you, it won't be annoying, and it won't be a gap between them, but for us, it's annoying. So we're back. This is second attempt at driving the Polestar. Let's go out this way. We? So Zach couldn't be with us this time, because he's at school, so I brought this one. So we're gonna just hop in now, and hopefully we can pick up the Polestar. Yeah. So we've got the car, it's just here. Uh, lovely lady sort me out with the car. I've got the keys and everything, so we're gonna take it for a drive and then we'll do a bit of a, a round circuit of it. So we're in the Polestar 2, me and my chief tester Harper. In the yellow seatbelt. Yeah, she's described them as golden seatbelts. So we had a bit of a walk round of the actual vehicle itself. Um, first time seeing the Polestar, so getting in is super easy. It's Tesla-esque in that sense. Um, to start it, it's really simple as well. You just gotta take your little gear selector and just put it all the way back um, and it will start everything up for you. So we're all sorted there. One of the things that she took us through that this has, similar to the Tesla when you've got that regener regenerative braking. Um, so you've got this one pedal drive, which means if you're driving and take your foot off the accelerator, it will automatically brake for you. You've got different modes for it. So you've got standard, low and off. So if you've got it off, you just drive with the two pedals as normal, brake and stop. But you can see here when you change it, it tells you how much it's, like, the effect it's gonna have. So this is, this is like that. So it means that if I have it like this, it's full um, one pedal mode. So as soon as I take my foot off the accelerator, it will brake. And creep mode as well. Creep mode means it will creep forward in traffic rather than just do its normal so if I turn creep mode off this is full one pedal drive so I should technically only need to use one pedal with the steering feel as well I can adjust that so I can have obviously a different a different feel and feedback on the steering wheel so ooh, ooh, fancy and um, so that's quite cool as well and obviously sports mode is what I'll be putting on later um, with assist we can see all of the assists we've got we've got lane keep driver support adaptive cruise Driver alert, I don't know what driver alert is. It's got a coffee on it, so something. It's on anyway. Collision avoidance, 
Um, and I suppose that's the similar sort of thing with collision avoidance too. Or maybe that's blind spot detection. I don't know, something like that anyway, but that's what it's got. We've got 99% charge, that's awesome. Uh, and what else do we have? We have all of the, the settings for locking, exterior lights, stuff like that. The display is actually quite nice. It's not too um, shiny. So it means one of the issues that I find in the Tesla is it gets super dirty super quickly. Uh, so this is a bit better with that. You can see at the top here, we've got the cameras. So there are cameras all around the car uh, and you can then pick which camera you want to see. So then if I go back to 360, I can see all the cameras and then I can pick a camera to show exactly how close I am. Where is that? It's just next to me, just there. So it gives me that nice 360 view. I did ask, because I know that Rich will want to know this. You will, Rich. Uh, they don't have record full time, so you would need an extra dash cam. She's going to find out a bit more about it, but uh, when it comes to the, the cameras, the, these are the cameras you kind of get, uh, and they're not used in the same way as they are on the Tesla, so you can't kind of access to see if anyone's scratched your car or anything like that. It's just purely used for this, and I'm pretty sure they don't record in any way. Um, but she's going to find out. So if, if I find out any more on that, I'll add that. So it's got Hey Google as well. Play music on Spotify. Yeah. <laughs> That's how much she needs. Maybe we need to test that one out. Um, hey Google, play some music on Spotify. Got it. Asking Spotify to play some music. Job done. So we've got uh, the Google Assistant on there. One, Wait, two, I'll have to pause this. And obviously you've got the full f Spotify um, on there and it's got an account set up already so we can just test it, but obviously you'd log in with your own account. One of the other things you can do, which is quite cool with Hey Google, just in the same way you can with uh, the tester, but obviously testers doesn't use Google Assistant, you can say, hey Google, turn on the air conditioning. Got it, turning on the air con. So it does things like that. Oh, cool. <laughs> it is on. Hey Google, turn up the air conditioning. Fans full. Sorry, I can't control that in this car. Air conditioning sounds. I didn't say that. So obviously this is this is one of the frustrations you have with Hey Google. We'll see. But I do think that the actual in-car entertainment and the setup of it so far is pretty good. Um, it seems seems quite nice we'll have to see what it's like as we're driving around it's also got this massive panoramic um sunroof not opening i don't think i don't think it opens in any way but it does look really cool and it's it's quite a nice car isn't it it looks nice but it doesn't have leather or anything this is uh it's the performance pack it's got all of this but it doesn't have um nice fancy leather but we'll see what it's like should we take it out Harper? it's also got a really really neat uh display here i think that's really quite impressive i like the look of that obviously it's got all the um, navigation your speed and everything like that and your range everything you need right in front of you so that's that's actually pretty cool i quite like that oh i nearly went right seatbelt on let's go so first impressions are, are pretty good actually it uh at first i was like oh, it's not got much poke to it but when you put your foot down harper it goes pretty quickly doesn't it what do you think when you put your foot down Fast. Is it as fast as the Tesla though? I don't know. Yeah, I don't think it's quite as, I don't think it's as fast as the Tesla, even though it's the performance mode. Um, but there is one thing that re is really irking me. The indicators. Yeah, the indicators, as Harper's saying. I, what I do love, I'm liking the braking. That's, I've got it on mild at the moment, or the middle one, not the full one. But I do really love the display. I know it's not like anything new, and a lot of cars, new cars have this now. Um, but it's really useful. I've got the sat nav up there and it's nice i like it uh the sounds are decent easy to use everything like that but listen to the indicator you can hear it through the it sounds like it sounds like through the speakers you might not be able to pick it up but i'll see if you can can you can you hear that it's like it's like it's you know when you've got a speaker and something's interfering with it and it's just giving you that like tick like ticking noise through the speaker it sounds like that 
And I know that indicators are supposed to have a noise and that's fine, but it just, I don't know, it's just... That's annoying. It's if, that's the only, if, they, if that's the only thing um, that I don't like about it, then I'll be happy with that. It, it's So far, it's, it is really nice to drive, I'm not going to lie. It's a pleasant driving experience. Um, but yeah, we'll, we're going to take it home because it's only 20 minutes away and then we'll do a bit of a, a walk around so you can see what the car looks like. You said that we'll get some food. And we'll get some food when we drop it back for lunch. I'm always thinking about food, that one. I'm always thinking about food. So we actually took the car back home because it's a nice little bit on the motorway. We can test that. So we did a bit of a test on the motorway, didn't we, Harper? Yeah. Um, it's pretty quick, isn't it? When you put your foot down, it seems to, it seems to change its response. So like... If you mash the accelerator really hard, it it goes obviously gives you full power. I mean, this sounds really stupid, but like if I push it down kind of like that all the way to the bottom, it seems to hit less than if you smash it right down. So the delivery is a, <coughs> a bit different. It just feels a bit different. Uh, but one of the things I've also noticed about the climate control, unless you can kind of change this maybe. Now these are the directions. So that's obviously straight ahead of you. Um, that's obviously upwards coming out the top um, and auto is just generally in the middle but and you've got your you know you've got your um, recirculation you've got your rear um, def defroster max front defroster all that sort of stuff normal but it's it's a single zone so we can't have different temperatures each side which is kind of fairly standard now so like if Harper decides that she's cold, which I am, we we can't we can't change it just for Harper. So it's just there's a single zone for the climate. Um, Bob, if I try saying that, you can do that if you want. Okay. Hey Google, turn off air conditioner. Sorry, I can't control that in this car. What's well, you said turn off, and they now tried to turn up. See if we can do it. Hey Google. Turn off the air conditioning. Sure, turning off the air. Still on. <laughs> Wait, what is it? Oh, so the blower, the air conditioning's gone off, but the blowers are still on. So see if we can, see if we can change that. Hey Google, turn off the fans. Okay, turning off fan. Yeah, see, there we go. We have to just know the right controls, that's all. All right, so let's, let's go out and give you a quick overview of the outside of the car as well so you can see what that's like. So it is a lovely day, so we'll just give you a bit of B-roll of the car so you can see a bit more of what it looks like. Lock and loaded, it's time for war. Ha! Tear down, kick in the door. Yeah, I want it all, give me some more. I want it all, give me some more. I want it all, give me some more. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Kill them all, it's time for war. It's time for war. Like pandemonium, I set it off. Yeah. Sacrifice, I bear the cross. Legendary, I'm a big dog. Hard knock on the front line. Pure blood, my bloodline. Headshots the first time. My aim good, bullseye. Warfare, don't play fair. Don't play fair. You not sure. So we have the boot here. It's an okay size boot. It's not massive, but the lady was explaining to us what can you do in the boot. So what's a good thing? What's this for? When you go shopping, you could you could get the bags and hang them up here. So you can just have your shopping. So you can come here and have your shopping there. Underneath, yeah. you have all of the space for your charging things. Washing stuff. So yeah, there's a bit we, of a compartment we underneath. We didn't put these stuff in there. Just to <laughs> no, say. no, we didn't do this, did and we? Like, oh, yeah, and what's that for in there? You don't need to get in there. It's okay. What's it for though? And it's like 
skiing stuff. Yeah, so for your skis. And the seats fold fully flat as well, so if you want the extra space. Don't know what this is. But you know, not a bad boot space. It's okay, it's, it's reasonable. Yeah. I think the Tesla's is bigger, but I think this is reasonable. Yeah. Charge is pretty simple. It's not locked in any way. You just do that and you've got your charging port there. You've got your different types. I don't know which ones those are, so. But you've also got, what's this here? Oh, maybe that's for um, detaching and attach, attaching it, I think. And then the back seats. Oh, but do you want to get in the back seats and see what they're like for size? Yeah. So it doesn't come with leather. Well, this one doesn't anyway. Um, I don't know if that's an option. I'm sure it would be. Um, it, but it's, I mean, it's way more car-like than a... Uh, than the, than the Tesla equivalent, right? So it feels much more like a car. So that's, they're the attachments for car seats. So you get Isofix car seats, and then you can attach your car seats on both sides there. So that's pretty good. And the seats look okay. Um, are they comfortable? Do you want to sit on them, Harper? See what they're like? Yeah. They're not too bad. They're not too bad? No. Quite firm? Mm -hmm. And they're the controls that you have in the back. So. Again, kind of less than the Tesla, but you do have heated seats in the rear. You've got a charging port, but no USBs or anything like that. You've purely got, unless that is USBs under there. Ah, yes, it is. So that's USB-C. So we've got two USB connections, two USB-C connections there, which is actually pretty good nowadays. Now we can charge stuff. Exactly, like bonus. Kindle. Of course. Wait, on holiday, maybe I could just... I just watch my Kindle and charge That would be in cool, wouldn't it? Or your DS as well. Oh, or not your DS, your Switch. Yeah. So, and then you've got your directional climate control there, which... This is actually a little bit better from from the air conditioners in Rajo because all we had to do is just put it down. It doesn't actually breeze it. But now we could just do it like that and it actually comes because we could just hold it and it actually moves like perfectly. That sounds good. You do have a front bonnet or a frunk which I'm going to pop open. But it's nothing to write home about. The one in the Tesla is much bigger. This one is actually, if I can remember how to open it, my fingers in there. Yeah. So obviously this is where all of the, the motors and stuff are underneath here. Um, you do have a small little space here so you can put, but this is apparently where you tend to put all your charging things. So you have access to that or whatever. You can put a hold all there, whatever. This is where you have access to your washer fluid. Um, but that's about it. Washer fluid and a frunk. And also we can like put like stuff in here and then we can just close it. Yeah, you could put a backpack or something. It's not a massive space there though, is it? But you could still put something and then you know, then if there's a lot, bit more stuff you could just put them in there like a kindle or something and then we could just that's true it was it's, it's useful there. anyway yeah. but just not massive yeah from a general quality like things like shutting the um shutting the front there shutting the bonnet um it, it feels okay it doesn't feel badly put together in any way in, fa in fact it feels it feels pretty good you know everything if you see it got a decent plunk to it it's got an electric closed boot that seems to work nicely it's got a gesture control boot as well which is probably about as useful as my uh, Range Rover Sport actually it seems to be intermittent I'll see it now if it works no I've just ah oh, no I just kicked it you're supposed to just wave your foot underneath if you've got I've, got, I've literally got the key here. The woman said, take the key, make sure you've got it on you, wave your foot underneath and it will open. There we go. That's how long it took me to do that. So you can imagine how frustrated I would be if I had a handful of shopping trying to open that. It, it, it's, it's, not, it's not awful, but like most gesture control boots, it ain't amazing. The Polestar 2 is clearly no slouch compared to a lot of vehicles but when you're comparing it to something like a model 3 performance then even though you've got the equivalent of 443 in this one which is the performance uh 443 horsepower and the equivalent 443 foot pounds of torque it only reaches 0 to 60 in 4.6 seconds now you think only that i mean that's pretty damn quick but by today's standards i don't think that's 
that impressive. I don't know if it's limited anyway, but it seems that the delivery of that 443 horsepower isn't actually that impressive. I mean, when you compare it to my 2004 4.2 litre V8 Audi S4, the only has about 350 360 horsepower four-wheel drive also like this that hits 0 to 60 in 4.1 seconds with an electric vehicle i would have expected that delivery to just be a little bit more crisp and a little bit more effective so that's slightly disappointing but i have to say that it doesn't actually feel that much of a slouch when you're driving it it does feel very responsive and nice so what i'm going to do now is take harper and I'm hoping that Zach gets home. This is where we test drove the, the Tesla outside our area during, during the rounds around here. Um, so he should he sh is scheduled to come home like now, really. Um, but I'm going to do some circuits around here because it's an industrial zone and we can do some launches, things like that, and just see how it feels. Uh, I'll whack in performance mode as well, or in sports mode, I should say, and see how that handling feels and see if it is reflected. So Harper, you are the chief test driver, I have to say. The woman said that this car is easy enough that even you could drive it. What do you think of the car so far? Can I put on the windshield? You want to put on the windshield. That is, that is good you want to put on the windshield. That is literally your review. Yeah. Anything else? Anything else you got to say? Anything you like about it? Anything you dislike about it? Hang on. Huh? The indicators. The, the noise from the indicators. Obviously, that's... Oh, and also... Oh, yes. These you, tiny things. You're not a big fan of these handles. Like, they are, in fact, they are slightly annoying. So, the door handles themselves, like, if you put one finger in there, yeah, you can do that and that, but anything more than that, so to speak. Um, also, you can't even put your a, hand underneath. They're a, they're a bit kind of funny shaped. So, that's, yeah. I mean, it's not anything, it's not something that I'd be like, I wouldn't buy it based on that, but at the same time, it's a bit annoying. It's a, it's, it's a little bit not designed well the way that the slope goes up as well when you're sitting there it just it's it's an odd one anyway everything like the switches they seem to be pretty bog standard you know again unlike the tesla this is a car this feels like a car everything about it is car like it's just got a very modern interior when it comes to in car entertainment um and yeah other than that it definitely feels way more like a car one of the things I have to say about this car as well, that there isn't a huge amount of storage. They haven't made the most of some of the space. So we do have a glove box, which feels a little bit plasticky. Yep, just pull that. It's not so bad, but um, it, it, it feels a little bit plasticky. Push it back up. And then we have one cup holder here. We've got a sliding armrest that comes down here. And we then have another cup holder there so you do have two cup holders and that folds right back into the back seats so if you want to utilize your cup holders you can without any issue my only thing that i can think of is that if you've got a fairly tall cup in there that sits out to sort of here which you, you know your standard mcdonald's cup or your grande from you know if you're getting a coffee from starbucks and it sits out here my elbow is going to take the top off that and no problem like that's i see that as a bit of an issue and these aren't game changers. Uh, it's just little things that I'm picking up as I'm sitting here and uh, and having a bit of a play, really. But what we're going to do now is we'll do some do some pulls and see see what it goes like. I did mention about the lack of marks on this screen, but you can see in the sun that it's quite quickly picked up from you. From me, and this is all from me because they clean this because of especially the situation at the moment, COVID and all that sort of stuff. They clean this every time, hence the cleaning stuff in the boot. But this clearly shows that it's going to be susceptible to some marks, so we can't get away from that. But we want to whack on sports mode, and let's go. <laughs> How is that? Is it fast? That ripped out all my bones. <laughs> So we're on the industrial area now, which has got some nice straight roads on it. So uh, it's foxy good to hear yeah, your foxy toys in the back. But let's just see again on the straight road, nice and straight, straighten her up, put your head back and... <laughs> Genuinely, her eyes are watering <laughs> from, from doing that. That is mental. <laughs> I can't wait to see what uh, Zach's reaction to this will be as well, if I can find him. Um, 
but yeah, you can circle. you can see uh, you can see from Harper's reaction that this, even though like I said, 4.6 to 60, it's not exactly that quick, but it doesn't feel it does not feel slow, like, and it's the power delivery. Yeah. Are you ready? That was basically naught to 100 kilometers an hour. So that's your naught to 60 time. Uh, so even though the, the stats on paper don't seem that impressive, I think the reality of it is it feels it feels quicker than than those sorts of stats. Um, like I said, this is in sports mode. It's in the it's got the performance pack, dual motor. Um, it still it still feels quick, like. Very. You kind of we get to a point in these sorts of things where you think, how fast do you need it? I mean, how fast is 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 more than usable on um, the public roads anyway? When you need to pull out and overtake someone, this provides you with everything you might need. I was going to pop into ACC and see if I can see them with the with the Polestar. I might pop in on the way back, um, but yeah, ACC. If you haven't seen our other video on the Tesla. Um, they were the ones that lent us the Tesla. Uh, they don't have pole stars because you can't get them in front. Oh, my head. <laughs> Why do you keep making me bang my head? It's so much fun. Oh, it's fun, but it keep, it's sore. It makes your head go back, does it? It bangs at the bottom of my head. Yeah. Oh, my head. Oh, my head. It's fun, but it keeps it sore. It makes your head go back, does it? It bangs at the... It bangs at the plastic. What do you mean? <laughs> Why? Let's see yourself back. So you can see that this car, it's, it still feels pretty quick. Not gonna lie, it still feels pretty quick. And like I said, for the public roads, I mean, what more do you need? It is a very nice place to be. It feels very much like a car. It's, yeah. Does it get the Ross thumbs up? I think it might do. Uh, I'll have to give it some more going on the way back. But we'll see. Let's do some more comparisons. I'm just going to wait for Zach to get home and then we'll take him out for a spin and then we'll head back. So it seems unfortunately we've missed Zach, so he can't have a test drive. I know that he loves to, he was disappointed that he wasn't going to be able to have a test drive in this. Um, but I suppose my conclusion on this, and we're just going to take it back now, is that it is a very competitive car, especially when you're comparing it to the Tesla and the price point. Um, I should also add that this has a tow capacity of about 1500 kilos or 1500 kilos exactly. Um, like I said, it's got 443 equivalent horsepower. This is the dual motor mode. Um, when it comes to price with the performance pack and the dual motor uh, mode or dual, dual motor model that this is, you're talking about 60 grand and that's, that's like UK price as well. So, and you know, it's not available currently in France or so can't give you a French equivalent and the Swiss equivalent price would not be comparable but you're talking if you're talking the uk market you're talking at least sixty thousand pounds for this this nearly said tesla for this polestar 2 performance now is it a 60 grand car that's what you've got to really ask yourself and while it is impressive and i do think that you know it it, it does pack a punch it's nice to drive it's got nice creature comforts inside i'm not sure it totally feels like a 60 grand car when you compare it to the equivalent of the tesla model 3 you do have more, I would say, that you would get for that. Even though some people say that the quality of the Tesla isn't quite there, when it comes to the experience and all of the different things that you have, like I said, we've got it feels like just a regular car with certain things that aren't that polished, I would say, from a finished point of view too. Whereas on the Tesla, you have a lot of different new functionality you can open. Uh, you know it doesn't feel like a car you can open things with voice things like that everything just feels a bit more about the technology rather than about the car itself so as people say the tesla isn't really a car it's more like a an iphone on wheels whereas this very much feels like a car and not a bad car but is it worth the 60 grand that you'd pay for it new i'm not sure that's that's a lot of money that you'll be paying for this car 
the one is even more expensive and I'd love to do that as a comparison. Uh, that's more of a comparison I'd say against something like the Taken, um, the Porsche Taken, which we've reviewed before as well. But yeah, I like it. I think it's a really nice car. If it was cheaper, if it was down more of the 35,000 range, I would say that that's where I would put it, 35, 40,000. That's what it feels like to me, not the 60,000 range. But if you've got any questions about my experience with, my small experience with the Polestar 2, if you've got any questions about the car in general, just drop a comment. I'd love to hear your feedback. If you've got one or tried one yourself, I'd love to hear what you think. And otherwise, if there's any other electric vehicles you'd like us to drive, because we really enjoy it, don't we, Harper? She says yes, apart from when I put my foot down fast. Uh, we'll happily go and test drive something for you. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, and we will see you on the next one. Lock and loaded, it's time for war. Ha! Tear down, kick in the door. Yeah. I want it all, give me some more. Ha! I want it all, give me some more.